This video looks at developing a process FMEA using the seven step approach of the AIG VDA FMEA handbook first edition. We're going to be focusing on step one, planning and preparation. One of the things that the new handbook focuses on is FMEA efficiency. This is weighing up the investment that we need to make in developing the FMEA versus the benefits that we will gain, which if we do it correctly can result in reduced complaints, reduced warranty concerns and also a reduced cost of non-quality. The seven step approach in the AIG VDA manual focuses on three distinct phases system analysis, failure analysis and risk mitigation, and risk communication. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on planning and preparation. Let's look at the objectives of step one, planning and preparation. In this phase of developing the FMEA, we need to identify the project, we need to establish an FMEA team, we need to develop a project plan, we need to analyze the boundaries of the FMEA. We need to identify the baseline FMEA and any lessons learned from any other similar projects that we've worked on. And this will provide an input to step two, which is structure analysis. An FMEA project may be identified by where we're going to introduce new technology or a new process. Maybe we've got a new application of an existing design or manufacturing process, or maybe where we propose to make engineering changes to an existing design or an existing process. One of the approaches in the new handbook is using the 5T approach as to how to start the FMEA project. So first of all, what is the intent? Why are we doing the FMEA? Second is timing. When is it due? This could be influenced by customer requirements or if it's an internal development by internal requirements. Team. Who needs to be in the FMEA team? Who's going to be involved in the multidisciplinary approach? The task. What do we actually need to do as part of the FMEA project? And the tool. How are we going to conduct the FMEA analysis? This is referred to in the FMEA handbook as the 5T approach. So establishing the FMEA team. In ITF 16949, the requirement is a multidisciplinary approach shall be used for the development and the review of manufacturing process risk analysis. And in IETF, it gives some guidance. A multidisciplinary team can include the organization's design function, the manufacturing function, the engineering function, people from quality, people from production, people from purchasing, people maybe from the supplier, people from maintenance, and other appropriate functions. These people don't all need to be involved in every aspect of the FMEA, but it is really important that we commit time to do the FMEA properly with a true multidisciplinary team. In step one, one of the other things we're going to look at is have we got any foundation or family FMEAs that we may have done under old format that we can use as an input to developing the FMEA. In the new handbook, it talks about uh, foundation. So these sometimes are called generic or baseline FMEAs. These are not product specific and they are not program specific. So for example, we may have a foundation FMEA about injection molding. Then we go down to family FMEA. So these may be for a family of product that are manufactured under a similar process that are all fairly similar products. So family FMEA may be parts that are injected molded that have an insert molded into them. We can use these as an input to developing an FMEA using the new AAG FMEA handbook. The next activity we have to do in step one is planning and preparation. And this is about defining the scope 
of the FMEA activity. Now traditionally one of the inputs into FMEA has been the process flow diagram. This is going to be very important in step one because we can use this to decide where do we really want to focus? Is there any particular step in the process that we need to do a deep dive FMEA on? The next thing we need to do in step one is collect any data. So this may be external performance data from other similar products or products produced on a similar manufacturing process to the one that we're developing the FMEA for. So this might include collecting details on customer complaints, field returns, warranty claims, and any other end user feedback information that is available. But also we can look at collecting internal performance data. So that may be scrap data, reject data, data on OEE, rework data, repair data, and any other information that would be a valuable input into preparing to undertake the FMEA activity. So to give you some idea about what this would look at, let's look at this case study situation. An organization just agreed a contract with GM for the development of a new product. It's an injected molded component with metal pins molded into the component. It's going to be used by GM to form an electrical connection with a mating part. This product is similar to other products, but much tighter tolerances. And also importantly, they're going to be using a robot to locate the pins into the injection molding tool. There is a special characteristic about the pull out force of the pins. And also there is a critical dimension specified in the GM specification. And for this product, GM are design responsible. So we don't have to consider developing the design FMEA, but in this case, we're going to be looking at developing the process FMEA. In the early stages of this product development, the team had actually looked at what is going to be the proposed process flow to make this component. And there are some steps in the process that are managed by the supply chain part of the organization. And then there are some activities that are performed within the GM cell. So in this step one of the FMEA process, we're going to be getting some idea about where do we really want to focus the FMEA activity. Because we have got an existing FMEA available for the injection molding process. But as we saw within the case study, there are some changes in the way this product is going to be manufactured. In particular, we're going to be using a robot to move the pins into the tool before we injection mold the component. So here the team could say, we're not going to look at an FMEA to cover the whole process, but we're going to focus on specific process steps. And in this case study, maybe it would be process step operation 50, which is setting up the tool and the robot. And it might be operation 60, which is about the actual injection molding process, including the placement of the inserts. One of the things we're also going to be doing in the step one planning and preparation is deciding what template are we going to be using to format the FMEA. The one you can see here is from the FMEA handbook. And this is example form type C. But what we have to do is understand any customer specific requirements about a particular FMEA format. Once we know that, we can then go on and complete the header information. This will be very similar to existing FMEAs that you might already have experience with. So in the header information, for example, we're going to be putting your company name, the location of the plant, the customer name, which in this case will be General Motors, details about the model year, the subject, where we're going to be starting the FMEA, who is the true cross-functional team that is going to be involved in the FMEA activity. Maybe we'll allocate a specific FMEA identification number. 
the process responsibility we may define, and if there's any particular confidentiality requirements that we've identified in the ability to share the result of the FMEA. Let's conclude step one. So in this phase, what we would have done is identify a specific FMEA project, and we would have established a multidisciplinary team. We would start to think about where do we want to focus the FMEA activity. This would be in a draft scope. We would develop a project plan, which would include the timings. We would have collected the relevant lessons learned data. And now we've done this, we are now ready to move on to step two, which is called structure analysis.